Good morning, my Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. I want to welcome you and thank God for your presence here with us for this morning's worship service, for this last worship service in the month of July in the year of our Lord 2021, while we are fighting and winning the battle against COVID-19, some casualties along the way, but we are winning the battle. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for how God is still bringing us through? This situation is season of life that we're going through right now. I want to welcome those who may be connecting with us via Facebook Live. I can't see your face, but I thank God that you're in the place. And for those who will be connecting with us via the Zoom teleconference, I thank God for all who are going to be with us on this Sunday morning. I'm just thanking God for that. Um, beloved, um, as we're getting ready to get started with our call to worship, I'm going to ask you just to do something right now because I can see the way that some of you all were hustling to get into the sanctuary, trying to get your spot in a place, and I thank God for you pressing your way. But I want you to understand that nothing has life in this earth unless God breathes on it. Unless God breathes on it. So I want you just to take a moment and just breathe. Just take in a breath. Let it out. Take in a breath. Let it out. Take in a breath. Let it out. Now, I hope that y'all listen to me the whole way through. I don't want nobody holding their breath the whole time. But we breathe for the Father, we breathe for the Son, and we breathe for the Holy Ghost who breathes in us. And so, prayer for you being able to calm yourself to get ready to get excited in the Lord on this day. Amen. Amen. Beloved, for those who can, I would encourage you to stand for the call to worship that is found in our church bulletin. For those who can. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. Let us pray. Dear Lord, dear Father, we come before you now in the name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thanking you, dear God, that the Messiah has come, that the Messiah has done the work that he came to do, that the Messiah continues to do the work of continuing to intercede for us, and that the Messiah is coming back. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this opportunity by the power of the Holy Spirit to gather as your sons and daughters, dear God, no longer as strangers, no longer as enemies, called friends by Christ, but able to call you Abba Father because of relationship with you through Jesus Christ is guided by the Holy Spirit. We're praying right now, dear Father, that you will remove every obstacle, that you will remove every hindrance that you will make smooth the pathway of mind, heart, and spirit so we may receive what you have prepared for us in this day. Thank you for those who gather with us here at the sanctuary. Praise God for those who are connecting with us via Facebook Live. And dear Lord, be with those who are calling in via the Zoom teleconference. I pray, dear God, that our physical distance will not separate us from your love for your words says nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so living and loving into you right now in this space, in this place, Heavenly Father, we say freedom to you, Holy Spirit. Give us your truth so we too may be free. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Um, beloved, just a few words that I have for you before our song of inspiration on this, um, this Sunday morning. Um, again, um, I, I, I want to echo what I said previously, that we are on the last Sunday of July in 2021. I just thank God for how God has blessed us that we are seven months in. Seven, you see, amen. Somebody ought to be happy about that. We are seven months into this year. Praise the Lord. Seven months in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, as we know that, um, you know, July is the most sacred um, month in the 12-month calendar year. Yeah. Amen, Brother Spears. Amen. Amen is the most sacred month. And so I just want to say thank you all so much for how you blessed me um, last, last, last Sunday. Um, I had a chance to go through the cars and the gifts and everything. And I'll just say again, Zion Memorial, you're incredible. If nobody hasn't told you that you're incredible. If you looked in the mirror and there wasn't nobody else to see your fabulousness, I want to tell you, y'all fabulous. 
I want to tell you that you're beautiful. I want to tell you that you're amazing. You are the children of God. You're made in the image of the Most High God. And I thank God for you. And so thank you again for helping me to feel your love and through you feeling the love of God. In having that feeling and having greater freedom and the truth that comes with God, I want to encourage all, be they here in the sanctuary, be they connecting with us via some other kind of medium. Unless there's a really, really, really strong medical, physical reason for you not to, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. It's becoming too important, especially right now. Other variants are coming out. You may be able to pray and think things are going to stay away. That's tempting God. That's not trusting in God. Every medical revelation that we have had is a revelation from God. That's how I receive it. I don't attribute it to man. I attribute it to God. Take advantage of what God is giving us in this season. You get yourself vaccinated. Encourage others to get vaccinated. Let it not be almost like inviting somebody to church to come into Christ. Let them not know because you didn't say or you didn't do. Do what you can to encourage folks to get vaccinated. Amen. Amen. Beloved, in terms of us having these types of freedoms, I also want us to understand that we will have greater freedom with our friends, family, and community weekend, August 13th through the 15th. Um, Trustee Kenny Enzar is a chairperson for this year and has been doing a great job of getting us organized. Make sure that you're supportive of that in terms of volunteering where you can. You'll be made well aware of where we need you. And Zion has always responded so well in the past. Let this not be the year, let this not be the season where we come up short. Remember, God has never come up short for us. Let us not come up short in how we can celebrate God. Amen. And beloved, in celebrating each other. I want to say thank you to the youth ministry. The youth ministry that has been so faithful and so diligent in pressing its way through um, this COVID-19 season, this COVID-19 period. We've got wonderful youth in this church, wonderful youth. And I had an opportunity to spend some time with them yesterday, I had an excursion to the Greensboro Science Center, and it was amazing. It was amazing. We had good turnout for many of our youth. If some of your young people missed out, they missed out. The church paid for it. It was free. All you had to do was show up, be present, and you would be given a present. Because if you haven't been to the Greensboro Science Center, it is something to see. I mean, I've been to museums and things like that literally all over the world. The one in Greensboro is really, really nice. I was surprised that they had something like that over there. And it was just really a blessing. But in going through it, Something that struck me was, and, it, and it typically it does, but it's become even more so as we're trying to grapple with things like climate change, and what's happening with the weather and things of those nature, was going through the dinosaur section. You know, there are no more dinosaurs. And so people will look at where we are right now and think who we are and how we are is the way it's always going to be. Go look at the dinosaur section. This is an ever-changing world, and that's because of God. The dinosaurs aren't here right now. We can look at the science. Please attribute it to God. God said there's a season for you, and then your season will end. And what I say to you in saying that is, you got one life to live. Live it well. You've got eternity on the other side of glory. But you need to live this side of glory very well. Because you may try to change and control things as best as you can. You have no more power than what God gives you. And again, if you go and look at those dinosaurs, they were a whole lot bigger and a whole lot stronger than me and you. And God said, it's time for you to go. I don't know what's going to happen with this earth, except I do know the word says the next time it ain't going to be destroyed with water. It's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. And this world as we see it, no matter how we try to preserve it, the word says this world is not going to always exist. There's a new heaven and a new earth. If you believe in that, you don't have to worry about the science. Trust in the God over that. And so I encourage you, as much and as best you can, live into the opportunities that God is providing to us, to love on each other and to love on other people. Amen. And again, I just want, to, I just want us to give a hand clap of praise to our youth for showing up, for pressing their way, and frankly, for just having a good time and representing Zion Memorial very well. I thank God for you. I thank God for your families. And I pray that you will continue to know that we love you only God loves you more. Amen. And so now we will have our song of inspiration uh, sung by our own sister, April Spears. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hey. 
I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know that he watches over me. Beloved, is anybody happy in the Lord? Is anybody free in God? Does anybody know that God watches all over the creation that he made? And he hasn't left you out either. That God's got his eyes all on you. But the thing about it, God is not like the signifying fool who can't do nothing. God is the one who watches over you because God desires to move into your life, to use your life, to give God some praise, to give God some honor, and to give God some glory. And therefore, God is using you to show the world God. God will take all that you're going through to show the world God through you. And how does God begin, beloved? God begins by speaking a word. 
And we have a word from the Lord on this day. Amen. Amen. Beloved, for those who can, I ask for you to please turn with me to the second book of Samuel, chapter 6. The second book of Samuel, chapter 6. And for those who can, if we could stand for the reading of God's holy word. Second Samuel, chapter 6. Second Samuel, chapter 6. We'll be reading verses 1 through 15. The word of God begins, it says, Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubim. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanied the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, on timbrels, on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook it and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and God smote him there for his error and there he died by the ark of God and David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day and David was afraid of the Lord that day and said how shall the ark of the Lord come to me so David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with the linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Mishael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Should have stopped at 15. I got happy and kept going. But that's another sermon another day. But let us, let us pray. Dear Lord, dear Father, we come before you now in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Dear God, we have welcomed men and ushered in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit, for being here with us. We have heard song of praise, dear Father. Thank you for allowing us to praise you in song. We have read your holy word that never returns unto you void. Thank you for allowing us to read your word. But now, dear God, I pray for mind, heart, and spirit to be open to receive your word. For the reading of your word is not the preaching of your word. The hearing of your word is not the preaching of your word. But now, dear God, we humbly come before you. Preach to us, dear Father, that the word that you prepared be spoken with boldness and courage, dear God. With faith and belief, let us receive it, dear God. And let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds, dear God. Bless us in this moment, dear God. The sons and daughters of God said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Y'all have to forgive me for getting happy and reading God's word. Sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I wasn't going to talk about how Michael or Michelle, however you want to pronounce her name, how she got all mad with her man because he was out there getting his groove thing on for God. There'll be another sermon for another day. Amen. Um, but, but beloved, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, I was so blessed to celebrate my birthday with you last, last Sunday. 
And you were so gracious, so loving, and so kind to me um, on my birthday, July 17th. But you see, this time for me is also um, a time of, of reflection. You see, I was sharing with um, Deacon Speaks a little earlier. In 2019, 10 days after my birthday, my father was transitioned um, by God through a massive heart attack. So we're now two days away from the anniversary of my father's death, July 27th, this upcoming Tuesday. And in the midst of dealing with this, I, I, I recall the scripture of Job 1 and 21 that says, The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You see, the two years since that time, I've really missed my father. I miss my father. Um, but in the midst of missing my father, I've still been um, so incredibly blessed. Thank you, Lord. God took my father, but God has blessed me with a wonderful family, a wonderful church family, good friends, bringing light out of darkness, hope in the midst of trouble, and love in the midst of some trying times. God is still showing up. It makes me think of the song, the Lord is blessing me. The Lord is blessing me. When? Right now. Oh, right now. I said, the Lord is blessing me. When? Right now. Oh, right now. What did he do? He woke me up this morning and then he started me on my way. I say, the Lord is blessing me when? Right now. Oh, right now. Beloved, in the midst of loss as well as gain, we must and should remember that the Lord never ceases to bless us. The Lord never ceases to bless us. Beloved, today's message is entitled, God is always blessing. God is always blessing. If I stop right now, somebody already ought to be happy. God is always blessing. Thank you, Lord. But beloved, while we can get happy in that, I think we need to have some definitions. You see, I have a question. How might you define a blessing? Theologically, you can lump all of your blessings into one of two buckets. The first bucket is grace, the unmerited favor of God. The second bucket is mercy. You're not receiving the punishment that you rightly deserve. Amen. In your life, have you experienced the grace, the unmerited favor of God? In your health, if you are doing well and well is situational, amen, then thank God for his grace over your health. Amen. I saw my brother Wayne come in. He said, I said, Wayne, how you doing? He said, on his crease, he said, I'm walking. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In your wealth, if you're doing well and well is situational, well for one might have a 401k, well for another might be able to pay, pay their bills for another day, then thank God for his grace in your wealth. Amen. And in your relationships, if you are doing well and well is situational, then thank God for his grace in your relationships. You might be fussing and fighting one day, you might be kissing and hugging the next day. Thank God for the good days and Get on your knees in the bad days. But thank God for his grace. Amen. You see, beloved, David experienced the grace of God in a battle with the Philistines. God blessed him to get the victory. And in the midst of the victory, the grace, David wanted to celebrate the victory by gathering his victorious and bringing not only the victory back to Jerusalem, he also wanted to bring back the presence of God. The presence of God in the form of the Ark of the Covenant. For David, this was also a blessing, some more grace, some more of the unmerited favor of God. And 2 Samuel verses 1 and 2 in chapter 6 explains. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelt between the cherubim. It was a blessing for David and the Israelites to do this great thing in bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Beloved, making it personal, when we bring the presence of God before others as ambassadors for Christ, as ministers of reconciliation, it is a great thing. Every time you show up as a child of God, it's a great thing that you are doing. When you show up as a child of God, don't forget that you're a child of God. And beloved, the greatness of the thing is only overshadowed by the fact that it is reflective of the fact that we are only able to do anything because of the grace of God. For you need to remember the Lord is blessing me uh, when, 
right now, right now. I said the Lord is blessing me when? Right now, oh, right now. What did he do? He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way because the Lord is blessing me when? Right now, I said, right now. And so David and the Israelites, they woke up one morning and they started on their way, blessed to be bringing the Ark of the Covenant to the city of David, Jerusalem. Beloved, we should all be excited about doing something for God. But know this, how we do what we do for God matters. Some people want to do things their own way, neglecting God, neglecting the people of God. Neglecting the ways of God. Be wary of saying that you're going to do something for God as if God is somehow deficient. As if God is somehow disabled. As if God is somehow destitute in a way that only you can fill the gap, the gulf, and the need. As if God needs you. But 1 Samuel 15 and 22 reminds us to obey is better than sacrifice. Beloved, while you may have a purpose in your mind to do something for God, please be prayerful and careful to make sure that God gives you agreement in your heart and in your spirit before you take action on what you think that you want to do for God. For David and the Israelites in desiring to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, it was supposed to have been carried on poles, on the shoulders of the Levites. Those are the priestly order. Instead, 2 Samuel 6 and 3 explains, and they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. Now, they did not have poles as instructed, but they had a new cart. They were doing something for God, but they had not done what God had instructed them to do. They had substituted sacrifice for obedience to God. They were acting outside of the will of God. And God let them live on. You see, beloved, the fullness of the duality of blessing does not stop with grace, the unmerited favor of God. It is complemented by mercy. You're not receiving what you deserve when you disobey, when you're outside of the will of God, when you sin. Anybody know folks still sin? I know it's 2021. Sin might have gone out of, out of style. We don't, we don't talk about that, that kind of stuff no more. You know, folks don't believe in sin. They don't believe in Satan. They don't believe in hell. But, 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 but anybody here still believes sin exists? You see, beloved, the duality of blessing does not stop with grace. It's complemented by mercy. Some of us like to talk about the grace, the unmerited favor of God. But we shy away from talking about the mercy of God. When we talk about our health, we like to talk about deliverance from sickness and death on the sick bed of affliction. But hear me right. Do we like to talk about the number of times we took the pregnancy test and it came up negative because we were not really trying to get pregnant. When we were just having us a good time. <laughs> Beloved, that was not God's grace. That was God's mercy. When we talk about our wealth, we like to talk about the job we just got, the promotion we just got, and the raise that we just got. But do we like to talk about how many times we messed up on the job and should have gotten fired, but they gave us another chance? Beloved, that was not God's grace. Hear me right. That was God's mercy. When we talk about our relationships, we like to talk about how God has blessed our family and friends with people who are successful, marriages that last, children who are a blessing from the Lord. But do we like to talk about how many times we broke relationship with ill thoughts, built walls with harsh words, and tore down bridges with destructive actions, and we somehow are still standing to tell the tale of how God made something out of less than nothing relationally through reconciliation that no one thought was possible. You sitting right beside somebody right now, and it wasn't God's grace. It was because of God's mercy. You see, while you may want to say it was the favor of God, grace, it was truly the mercy of God. You're just not getting what you really deserve. 
Thank you, Lord. You see, beloved, the Ark of the Covenant was never supposed to be carried on a cart, new or old, driven by oxen. The Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be carried with poles on the shoulders of the Levite priest. Do you even know what it looks like to be right with God? Such that when you start going wrong, conviction hits you and you say, I got to repent because I'm doing something. But this ain't what God wants me to do. You see, we've got to be careful, ever so careful, in, in how we handle the things of God and the people of God. God's anointed people and things are dear to God, and how you handle them matter to God. You see, for a brief part of the journey, they were happy. They were joyful in their journey because of the victory. And the greatest aspect of it was bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. David led the procession for 2 Samuel 6 and 5 shares. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord of all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even of harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. They were having them a celebration. They were having them a parade of parades. They had the big band out there doing their thing. They were probably out there doing a the Cuban shuffle. They were probably doing an electric slide. They were probably doing whatever it is when y'all get at y'all parties. Y'all want to get your groove on. They're they're probably tick tocking and dabbing out there. We got the ark and we headed to Jerusalem. We about to have us a good time. And it was all wonderful. Until it was not. Beloved, in journeying with God, I pray you will understand whether you consider yourself to be saint or sinner, you journeying with God. We need to be careful in how we live our lives. There are consequences to our decisions. For 2 Samuel 6 and 6 tells us, And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. For the oxen shook it. You see, David was out there dancing. The Israelites were out there dancing. I think the oxen, they was out there dancing too. And then with all of this excitement, the cart shook. The ark slipped. Everybody said, oops. And Uzzah, in an act of protection and preservation of this most holy artifact, reached out his hand to keep it from falling. He did what was natural. But he was dealing with the supernatural. You see, in a sense, because the presence of God was represented by the Ark of the Covenant, he was trying to keep God from falling. The one who made the world, the one who holds all in his hands, he was trying to help God. But in this moment of Uzzah trying to do something for the Ark and trying to do something for God, he had forgotten what God had said about how the Ark of the Covenant was to be handled. In Numbers 4 and 15, God told Moses and his brother Aaron, they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. And in Numbers 7 and 9, God told Moses they should bear upon their shoulders. Beloved, from the Pentateuch, the third of the five books of the Bible, Moses' holy book, David and the men should have known better. Part of the king's responsibility was to study and meditate on God's word day and night. He should have known better. You see, beloved, you can substitute margarine for butter in a cake. It may not make too much of a difference because some people might not notice. But then there are some people who have to have things just so because cake is not just cake to them. You see, you can have steak for dinner and some people might not care about the exact cut. It may not make much of a difference whether it's sirloin, New York strip, or ribeye, but then there are some people who have to have things just so, such as <laughs> y'all culture folk filet mignon. Because steak is not just steak to them. Beloved, it is said that you are what you eat, and some people truly take that to heart, while others will have their palate satisfied with just about anything. But then there are some people who have to have things just so because they truly value and watch what they eat. Beloved, God serves us a spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical meal of blessings to feast upon 
so that we will know the grace, mercy, and love of God. And to receive these blessings of God in a continuous fashion, you cannot come to God any kind of way. Faith, trust, and obedience are key. Uzzah failed to obey God's words and there were consequences. They had experienced God's grace, God's unmerited favor in victory in battle. They had been blessed. They had experienced God's mercy in moving the ark in a less than correct fashion. They had been blessed. Now they would have to experience God's wrath as a part of God's discipline. Would they see that as a blessing also? For 2 Samuel 6 and 7 reveals, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Beloved, do you believe that the word of God is true? Or do you see God's word as old words from an old book? Beloved, do you believe in the promises of God found in the Holy Bible? Or do you see the Holy Bible as a book to be considered for philosophical purposes with stories that may or may not be true depending on your historical interpretation. Beloved, do you believe in the consequences of obeying or disobeying God according to the living word of God? Or do you see the living word of God as being a buffet of arbitrary rules and principles that you can partake of when you want to and ignore when you do not want to deal with them because they are out of step and out of style with what is contemporary, what is popular, and what is cool? You see, I'm going to say it to you right now, young folks, it ain't always going to be cool to be a Christian, even if, if it is right now at all. Some folks are more concerned about getting piercings and tattoos, but I'm questioning about what's tattooed on your heart? You have Jesus tattooed on your heart. I don't care about what's on your body. What's on your heart? You see, beloved, the word of God is true. Beloved, the promises of God are real. And beloved, the consequences for obeying or disobeying the word of God will make all of the difference in your life. God said not to touch the Ark of the Covenant, or you would die. Beloved, Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant and Uzzah died. God said it. God did it. The season of grace had given way to a season of mercy that gave way to a new season of discipline. All should have been considered a blessing, but everybody does not consider discipline to be a blessing. Some folks just want to get their way and they want nobody to have no say. Just do what they want to do. Just let me do me. If you had made you, if you had your own heaven, if you had your own hell, cool. But you didn't make you. And you don't have a heaven. And you don't have a hell. But you will go to one or the other. If you believe the word of God, that is. You see, David, the king after God's own heart, was not pleased because of the death of Uzzah. David looked beyond Uzzah's disobedience and God's consequence responded in his, in his own emotions. Uh, not out of spiritual, emotional, or mental obedience, discernment, understanding, and maturity. He made a memorial of the moment. As 2 Samuel 6 and 8 tells us, he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. Perez Uzzah. Perez means breach. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Beloved, have you ever gotten mad, disappointed, or displeased with God? Y'all sitting there like y'all scared to say so. I just want to know if you want to be real. Anybody been mad with God? Anybody been uh, disappointed with God? Anybody been displeased with God? Why? How has God ever wronged you? Or have you simply gotten upset because of the discipline of God? God been trying to teach you something. God been trying to tell you something. And you don't want to pay the currency of transformation attention. You just want to do what you want to do. We all do. You see, beloved, who's a sin? Not God. David got upset, though, with God, not Uzzah. Beloved, Hebrews 12 and 6 tells us, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. 
and scourgeth every son and daughter whom he receiveth. That's what it says in the King James Version. In the Revised Standard Version, it says this, For the Lord disciplines him or her whom he loves. Amen. He disciplines you because he loves you. Every son and daughter he chastises those whom he receives. Beloved, according to God, discipline is equivalent to love. And chastisement is equivalent to you having a relationship with God. Basically, you should expect for God to spank you every now and then. When you get out of order with God. Not because God hates you, but because God loves you. Just as the grace and mercy of God is a blessing, the discipline of God is a blessing too. In modeling such a relationship with my own children, I've often told them not to get worried when I'm giving them, from their perspective, <laughs> a hard time by saying things that they really just don't want to hear. That is actually a part of my loving them, my loving them, although I must not go too far. For Ephesians 6 and 4 says, And ye fathers and mothers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You got to discipline, but don't go crazy. But for my children, they should get really concerned when they do something that merits some discipline, and I go silent, and I act like I just don't even care. That means that the relationship has changed for the worse. And not for the better. So children, I know you don't always want to hear what mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa, whoever, auntie, uncle got something to say to you. But they're telling you that because they love you. That's part of their love language. You need to get really worried when you really mess up. And then you show up and they act like nothing happened. Because then you know what they've just done? Wrote you off. They just wrote you off. Beloved, if you're a child of God, you should expect to hear from God sooner or later. In one way or another, whether you want to hear from God, your Heavenly Father, or not. Why? Because God loves you and God wants to bless you. But David did not receive this act of Uzzah's death in this way. He did not see it as an act of love. He did not receive it as a blessing. Instead, 2 Samuel 6 and 9 says, And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Beloved, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 reminds us, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Beloved, reje David rejected the blessing of God and instead yielded to the spirit of fear, which typically leads to one of three responses. Fight, flight, or freeze. Some people fight like an animal backed in a corner when they are afraid. Some will even say, you better leave me alone, I'll fight you. Some people run when they're afraid or feel overwhelmed by what is going on around them. Some will even say, I've got to go, I can't take this. And then some people will simply stand and stay right in the moment, taking little to no action when they're afraid, paralyzed by the fear. Some will even say, I did not know what to do, so I didn't do anything. Beloved, we all experience fear to some degree, in our, some degree in our lives. We can all talk about what we will do in certain situations. You know, some people get real big and bad when ain't nothing bad around. And often we exaggerate our courage and our abilities in difficult times and then look back and think things over after having experienced a moment of fear, after fighting, after running, or after being frozen in the moment. Was it really God's fault? Or did you simply choose to leave God and leave your blessing behind. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was a blessing. For 2 Samuel 6 and 11 tells us, And the Ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Whew. The presence of God was still with the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was just not with David. Beloved, when you leave your blessing behind, the blessing canon will likely still exist. That will potentially change things for the worse for you. But know this, God don't take no vacations. God, God don't experience no recessions. 
And God has never been in a depression. God, the 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year, 366 in leap year, God is always open, available, and is always in the blessing business. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So beloved, David forfeited his blessing in the presence of God and Obed-Edom and, and his whole household was blessed instead of David. You see, beloved, James 1 and 17 is always true. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Basically, God cannot help but be God, the blessing God. So the question arises, will you let God bless you? Will you let God bless you? And Obed-Edom's blessings became big news because the right kind of news travels fast. And they didn't even have the internet. In 2 Samuel 6 and 12, the news that David got was, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. Again, God was still in the blessing business, always has been, always is, and always will be. In fear, David had left his blessing behind, and now was blessing somebody else. Anybody ever been there? What's that like? That is like, well, you know, she was always a good woman, but now she's a good woman for him and not you. That's like, well, you know, he was always a good man, but now he's a good man for her and not for you. That is like, well, you know, they were always a good work, but now they work for them. They just don't work for you. You see, sometimes you don't miss your good thing until your good thing is gone. And not just gone, but your good thing is being good to somebody else. And then, you want your good thing back. David wanted his good thing back. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And beloved, hopefully and prayerfully, when you have gone through your season, through your season of, of, of not experiencing the blessings of God, uh, because of you, not because of God, for we must understand that God is always blessed, that maybe, just maybe, you will be ready to do things the right way, the righteous way, God's way. You see, beloved, this time David did not disregard God's commands so that his blessing would be blocked. You see, this time David did not let Israel disregard God's command so that Israel's blessings would be blocked. I think in this three-month time, David probably went back to his word and started studying up again on what am I supposed to do? What kind of king am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to lead my people? You see, this time in 2 Samuel 6 and 13, it says, And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. This time David did it right. This time there there were no breaches. This time there was no Perez. This time there was no death. This time there was just celebration of the blessed presence of the Lord. This time the priests were carrying the ark on poles the way it should have been carried all along. And this time there was no fear. Instead, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. Y'all know y'all clubbing days. Y'all know when y'all used to go dressed to impress and come out and sweated everything out. Some folks might not be here this morning because they were at the club last night. David was girded with a linen ephod. He had his gig and clothes on. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting with the sound of the trumpet. David was so joyful to have his blessing back, to be experiencing the presence of the Lord that he played, he sang, and he danced, not like a king, but like one who'd been born again, one who'd been healed, 
one who'd been freed, one who'd been delivered with an undignified praise. You see, I wish some of y'all would let the Holy Spirit be free in you and quit trying to look so doggone cute all the time. And just go ahead and praise the Lord in a way that might break forth some blessings in your lives. It may be that you are the damned blocking up your blessings so you're living damned instead of living blessed. But if you will let God just break through, you might find that you'll stop being broken. It's almost like in William McDowell's song, I won't go back where it's saying, I've been changed, healed, free. Delivered, I found joy, peace, grace, and favor. And I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be. Why? It was before your presence came and changed me. Beloved David and Israel, professing the midst of the chance to be disciplined by God, that it would not now be fight, it wouldn't be flight, it wouldn't be freeze, it would be favor. I'm getting God's favor. I want God's favor. I gotta have God's favor. I can't live without God's favor. I can't make it without God's favor. I won't go home without God's favor. I'm gonna wake up asking for favor. I'm gonna go to bed thanking him for favor. I open up again, it's gonna be for favor. All I know is I need God's favor and they would not go back I can't go back ah, to the way it used to be missing God's eternal blessing because God is always blessing Amen. beloved may your life be a similar declaration to the world what I want to say to you right now how you live in could be the difference between somebody else wanting to give their life to God through Jesus Christ as guided by the Holy Spirit or not. You got some responsibility on your shoulders. Thank God Jesus said, oh, oh my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, I'm equipping you to do some serious work out here in the world. You see, beloved, God is always blessing in your health. It may not be what you always want it to be. But praise God, come on now, help me. It could be worse. God is always blessing in your wealth. Help me now. It may not be as much as you would want it to be, but praise God, it could be worse. And beloved, God is always blessing in your relationship. Somebody help me. They may not always be perfect. But praise God, they could be worse. And then trusting in the God who has no limitations on his ability to bless us. We should not and do not expect the minimum. One thing I don't like, I didn't say I didn't love, one thing I don't like is low expectation Christians. That's why y'all, y'all, y'all want to get me fired up, call our church small. We growing. We growing. You speak smallness, you speak deficient, you speak negative into your life and the life of others, guess what you're going to get back? If you plant an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree. You plant a cherry seed, you're going to get a cherry tree. You plant a peach seed, you're going to get a peach tree. You plant a negative seed, you're going to get a negative tree. It may be you feasted on the fruit of negativity, lack, and limitation, because that's what you planted in the soil of your life. And God has better for his children than that. God's got better for his children than that. We need to pray for the maximum. We need to go for the greatness. We should seek after the grandness and the great, incredible God. But then we got to be pleased with whatever it is that God gives us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, beloved, the key is knowing that we are blessed with God's grace, that we are blessed with God's mercy, and that we are blessed with God's love. And with evidence in our lives of God's grace, evidence in our lives of God's mercy, and evidence in our lives of God's love, we should know and we should declare that God, 
blessing. Amen. 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 I think he even got a squeal from the baby. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Little child shall lead us. Fear hit the child and hit God's children. Maybe they'll start squealing too. They say, them folks down in Zion, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to act. It's right. You're right. We don't know how to act. Because we're trying to keep it real. And we love God. And we ain't ashamed of the world knowing that we love God. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Beloved, my hope and my prayer is that you will live blessed lives. That's why in King and Raphael, they got it down good. When we walk in the sanctuary on Sunday morning, they know. If somebody say, how you doing? The only answer is blessed. The only answer. I, did, I, did, I didn't say, is everything good? I didn't say, is everything working out the way you want it to? I didn't say, uh, are you having any problems? I didn't say, are you having any champ? Because we know if we start that conversation, that can go left quick. Real quick. Because we all going through something. We all going through something. That brother or sister might be able to smile it up, but trust me, they're trying to fix up the mess up. That they're trusting in God to bless up. And they don't, they're like, you, I, 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 you ain't God. So I ain't going to give you all that. But I will give it to God. I will give it to God. And beloved, we can give everything to God. You see, David eventually, if you think about it, David had to give the death of Uzzah to God. He had three months to worry about that. But then what he saw was God started messing with him. God said, oh, you don't want my blessing? Cool. The bucket's full. Obed-Edom was a Gittite. Obed-Edom wasn't an Israelite. He wasn't one of the chosen ones. But God can bless anybody. God can bless anybody. And so God blessed him. God blessed him. But beloved, wouldn't it be better for when you come into your daddy's house that you come to get your blessing? Because your daddy's in the blessing business. I mean, I know some of us want to be employed. Well, some of us may be between jobs. As a Christian, you ain't never unemployed. You're a Christian the rest of your life. You just need to come on and get your assignment from your father, and he'll hook you up. You, you, know, you know some place, you're you, you looking for the hookup. You know, you go to a, a, a restaurant or something, the line long, you see somebody at the front, you know, you walk up there, like, hey, man, hook me up. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're sitting down, everybody else around you mad and upset. God's got the hookup. God's got the hookup. God has the hookup for your life. And God can bless you in ways that you would never, ever imagine. God's got that for you. But you got to do something. You got to do something. You got to give your life back. You got to give it back. You got to change. You can't stay the same. You can't stay the same. When people talk about, oh, well, I was born this way. We well, were all born this way. You said something and said nothing at the same time. Well, I was just born this way. Okay. Now say something that matters. You see, it don't matter how you came in. It's how you're going out. It's how you're going out. How you're going out. And so for those who are desiring to get on the old ship of Zion and to get on board, to get on board, I say that the doors of the ship are now open because the doors of the church are now open. And we can please rise and get ready to welcome perhaps some fellow Sojourners on a trip that we're about to go on. I say to you now that if you want that relationship with God to where God will bless you, and again, please do not look for perfection in your life. It won't happen. But if you're looking for the one who can change your life in such a way, it will be incredible and it will be remarkable and that you will have light shining inside of you that will draw others to you who will desire to have what you have. They'll want to be in the places where you want to be. They'll want to do some of the things that you're doing. You gotta let 
Jesus come into your heart. And this is the opportunity we have right now. If there is one who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior, you don't have to continue to handle God's things in a way that's going to bring death. You can handle God's things in a way that's going to bring life and life eternal. But you've got to give yourself to God through Jesus Christ. Today is the day. Today is the day. You can decide right now, like William McDowell said, I won't go back. I'm not going to leave this sanctuary the same. i got to be changed. It's got to happen for me today. Is there one? Is there one who does not know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior and they're ready to be a part of this family? I'm not talking about Zion. I'm, we're just a branch. I'm not talking about you being grafted into the tree of life that's found in Jesus Christ. Is there one who's ready to give their life today? Is there one? Beloved, as I say Sunday after Sunday, you may already be on the right track. See, let us remember, David was chosen and anointed by God. He was the king after God's own heart. But as we know from David, David messed up a few times. It wasn't just the Ark of the Covenant. It was with that honey Bathsheba, too. David knew, how to, David, knew how to, David knew how to kick it and keep it live. David knew how to mess it up. But then he also had a relationship with God where even in his mess-ups, God said, I told you you was always going to be somebody from your family sitting on the throne. I have a covenant with you. When you gave your life to God through Jesus Christ as guided by the Holy Spirit, there was another covenant. God became your heavenly father forever. Forever. So if you need to get back on track, if you need to recommit and rededicate your life, you're only, you will only be doing what we all have to do from time to time. And if you need to do that, I would say come now. And let's talk about that as well. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it here, that's fine. You have my number. Reach out. And it's not that I'm any closer to God than you are. I'm really not. But I want to encourage you to get closer to God yourself. God loves you like God loves me. And I just want to love you like God loves you. And this church wants to love you like God loves you. And so if you need to get back, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't let that thing that doesn't matter keep you from being who God is calling you to be. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Amen? Amen. So if not now, if you want to talk, please, it will be between me and you. And God, trust. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Beloved, on this last Sunday in July, has God blessed us with a, uh, a, a word on, on this Sunday? Has God been good to us on this Sunday? I just, I just, I just, I just praise God and thank God for each and every one of you. And again, um, you're doing my heart good. And again, I'm, I'm not hung up on numbers, but I am hung up on my family. And I love how God is restoring the family. Um, and, and I'm excited about that. But even in the period of restoration, we're still in a pandemic. Stay safe. And again, as I was encouraging earlier um, today, unless you've got a real medical, physical reason for not doing so, as your pastor, one who loves you mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I love you. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Please don't be going on the internet finding some crazy conspiracy theories and saying, well, I saw this on the internet. So, folks are dying. We haven't had a homegoing service because of COVID in this church. I don't want any of us to have to go through that when it could be very easy for us to wipe that out. Now, again, if you got something medical or physical that prevents it, then, hey, stay safe. Do what you got to do. But otherwise, I strongly encourage to the point of, uh, I, don't, I don't like giving advice to grown folks, because then something don't go right, y'all blame me. But don't give me some advice, get vaccinated. I love you too much. I love you too much not to tell you that. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. You need to. Part of your freedom is going to be found in your vaccination, I do believe. Amen.
Amen. Beloved, I thank God for you. I thank God for this time that we have had together. As I've said on other Sundays, as God keeps filling us up more and more, just look around. Look, look, how, look how good y'all look. Look how good y'all look. Look how good y'all look. That, that, that's worth giving God a hand clap of praise for. Look around. Look how good y'all look. Look how good y'all look. And if y'all feel good looking at each other on this Sunday, ooh, next Sunday. And bring somebody else to look at you too. And say, look how good we look. But be safe and stay healthy. We're not going to allow ourselves to worship in a way that we're going to put you at risk. So do what is right. Beloved, let us rise and prepare to leave. Because I, 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 I could stand here and keep doing this, but I'm not going to do that to you. I, I'm just feeling full right now. I thank God for you. Let us rise for a word of benediction. Mm. Mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Beloved, I raise my hands over you now. Coming before you, dear God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I come thanking you, dear God, for allowing your sons and your daughters to come and to gather together. Within the four walls, we call each other mother and father, sister and brother, son and daughter. But before you, we're just your children. We're just your sons and your daughters. Thank you, dear God, for your word. I pray, dear Father, like a net that is full of the promise of catching many, that you will pull us close to you. Pull us close to you, dear God, but help us to understand that in being close to you, we're to share your love with others in this world. I pray you will use us as we prepare to go out, dear God, to do the things that you desire for us to do, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory. That you will continue to cover us with your richness, your blessed abundance, dear God, your love for us and our health and our wealth and our relationships, such that we can be able to claim the grace and the mercy, the blessings, dear God, that are ours. But also, dear Lord, help us to understand as your children, we have to be disciplined. We have to follow you. We have to do what you desire for us to do for us to be blessed by you. But in doing so, let it not be grievous and let it not be so weighty that we want to run from you. Let us continue to return to you time and time and time again. And so as we prepare to depart from this sanctuary, we prepare to depart from Facebook Live or from, from Zoom, dear God, I pray we will know that your spirit will never depart from us and your spirit will bring us home. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus Christ's holy name, we do pray and we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.